Everything on me is vibrating. My hands, my arms, my brain. Things I didn't even know could vibrate on me were jumbling around as if I had those pornographic shake weights strapped to every inch of my body. And I can't even begin to describe what was going on in those oh-so-sensitive regions. You definitely don't want to know. Something I get now add 245 kilometers and hills the steepest 22% grade to the mix, and you have the Ronda Van Vlanderen, better known in the English-speaking world as Tor Flanders. The Ronda, as it's lovingly referred to, was created in 1913 by Carol van Winendale, a local sports paper publisher. Naturally, the race has evolved over the last 100 years, changing routes and growing astronomically in popularity, and often won by homegrown heroes like the best damn cyclist there ever was, Eddie Merckx, who chalked up a record 525 pro wins throughout his career, including the 1969 and 75 Ronda. Today, the Runda continues as a symbol of Flemish pride. In other words, if you were to learn one thing about modern Belgian culture, it's cycling. These people freaking love cycling. It's their football, except they're doing it every day. Commuting, training, or even touring. Simply put, Belgian asses love the saddle. So what's a citizen of the United States of Automobiles doing here? Glad you asked. Back in February, I was informed that I would be riding with five other cyclists from across the world in BMC Switzerland's Grand Fundo experience. The Cyclo, which is basically an amateur event a day before the pro race, would be the 245km Tour of Flanders. That's nearly nine hours of ass-on-saddle action for most amateur American riders. But the length wasn't the kicker. The kicker was the cobbles. Uneven, jagged stones used for streets in the Middle Ages. Scenic for walking, not so conducive to smooth cycling. At least I would be riding on a BMC Grand Fundo, an absolutely gorgeous bike engineered by those handy Swiss for this kind of ride. My first ride on the cobbles came during a 19 mile training ride around Kortrijk with Steven and Viola from BMC and Alexander from Brazil. Now watch as the cobbles torture the camera into submission. It doesn't take long for it to turn upward to the heavens, seemingly pleading for mercy. Why is this happening? I didn't sign up for this. Who films a bike ride anyway? Just remember the damn thing. Definitely no bueno on the cojones. The next morning was eye-opening in a much more benevolent way. And not just because of the train station view the Park Hotel sent me up with. Seriously, Belgium gets me. Alexander and I headed out to explore Kortrijk, a town with medieval roots. And it shows. Not in a disease-ridden Monty Python, bring out your dead sort of way. But aesthetically speaking, this town clearly has been around for a while. Cobbled streets, sidewalks, actually made for people to walk on and towering churches make Kortrijk the beautiful city that it is. And the bike lanes! They are everywhere. On city roads and country roads, everyone is on a bike. Yes, Belgium is quickly revealing itself to this foreigner as a proverbial bike heaven. So it's only fitting that BMC Switzerland has a very prominent presence in a nation where everyone bikes. Introducing the BMC Concept Store. Just under 40 kilometers outside of town, this shiny facility of all things BMC stores goodies from and for the pros. Steven walks us through all the beautiful toys a cyclist could ever want to help get them through those grueling hours on the saddle. Speaking of grueling hours on the saddle, the Tour of Flanders Cyclo I came to ride was beckoning. 245 kilometers? Cobbled climbs? No problem! I'm not nervous at all! Let's do this!
Good Morning Bruges, home of the 2014 Tour of Flanders starting line. For the amateurs, you roll when you're ready, and after just a few last-minute adrenaline-fueled bathroom breaks, we were ready to become Flanders. You start off with a slow roll through the streets of Bruges. Like Kortrijk, any rider can see the history evident in the buildings hugging the typically narrow streets of Europe. But once you're out of the city, the pelotons start to form and you're off to a steady beat of about 20 to 22 miles per hour. My fellow riders and I of Team BMC Grand Fundo stuck together for about the first 100 kilometers of smooth riding toward Kortrijk. Easy does it. Of course, to the Flandrians, this is merely a warm-up to the fun stuff. And by fun stuff, I of course mean the climbs with intimidating names like the Eichenberg, Wolvenberg, or Valkenberg. Intimidating if you say it with a scary Germanic accent, as my mind typically does. But all of these climbs pale in comparison to the Koppenberg, a narrow, steep son of a bitch I had read about before my travels. But I'm athletic. I do things. I'll just find my inner Popeye and skate up that hill like it's nothing. These are the things I thought before I came to the Koppenberg after about 215 kilometers of riding and 11 other climbs. In other words, I crumbled. And fast. And there's nothing more humiliating in the Tour of Flanders than dismounting during one of its signature climbs as the true Flanderians pass you by. I can still see the cameras pointing at me. Spectators capturing this ego-annihilating moment for all of eternity. I wanted to shield my face from the cameras like some former child celebrity heading into court for their latest drunken stupor. Don't look at me! I'm hideous! Excuses ran through my head. We have nothing like this back home. How could I have possibly trained? But nothing could comfort me at that humbling moment. Flanders kicked me in the stones, and I had to swallow my pride. Thankfully, I was able to redeem myself with the remaining five climbs in 40 kilometers. With relative comfort, I coasted through as I imagined a true Flandrian would, and was finally able to enjoy the Belgian countryside. And the Belgian countryside is... It's incredible! The sun bouncing off the hills, the green farmlands, the grazing animals, the occasional windmill that screams, You're in Belgium! All I want to do is shut up and show you the pretty pictures. In fact, let's do that. Flanders montage time, go! Indeed, cycling here does not suck. After climbing the Petherberg, it was clear that this oxymoronic, enjoyable torment would soon come to an end. Nothing but flat, smooth roads ahead. Never again would I have to voluntarily subject myself to those cursed cobbles. But I probably will. Now quick backstory, I was the only American sent to ride with BMC. Though the reason I was selected was never made clear, it was generally agreed that this video did the trick. Hi, my name's Joe Bauer, professional amateur cyclist, and I need you, you, and you to tell BMC you want me to ride in the 2014 Tour of Flanders. <laughs> Hotly hell, Belgerino. And if you vote for me, I can promise you that it will not impact your I know what you're thinking. Watch out, Scorsese. But through the powers of social media, I found another American, one Mr. Brian Begley, who wanted to ride for his buddy Ed Cartwright. Brian and Ed went to high school together at a NATO base near Brussels, and both joined the military afterwards, serving in the first Gulf War. Ed later served in both Iraq and Afghanistan. About a year ago, Brian and Ed reconnected over Facebook. Brian was devastated to learn that Ed had terminal brain cancer. He then vowed to do something in honor of his lifelong pal, and thought riding the Ronda would be the perfect gift. So Brian and I chatted, and we decided I would ride the Tour of Flanders wearing a road ID for Ed. 
nearing the finish line, I wanted to let Ed know that I actually did wear it. All right, Ed. We're just about at the end of the tour of Flanders, and I just want to thank you for letting me wear this guy while I ride. The BMC Grand Fundo team was also nice enough to sign an extra jersey to send to Ed. So with what imagined power I have, I say it makes Ed an honorary Flandrian. Cheers to you, Ed. Rolling over the finish line near downtown Audenard, you feel like you could do it all over again. Suddenly you're energized and not at all regretting your decision to take on the Tour of Flanders. Simply put, it feels awesome. You've done something millions, perhaps billions of people cannot do. So suck it world, I've got this going for me. My only regret was having to leave. I want to do this all the time. Bike everywhere, be treated like a BMC pro. It's not a bad life. I'll learn Dutch if that's what it takes, but definitely not French. An American has to draw the line somewhere. Inevitably, we all have to go home at some point, but at least I got a taste of Flanders. Hopefully someday I'll be back on the saddle, riding through Bruges, down around Kortrijk, and onward to Outerland. <laughs>